Hello guys, I'm real life sensation Ryan Wright. And I'm fictional sensation Jerry. Jerry and I today are going to talk about the sequel or spinoff or something that is somehow connected to Cloverfield. 10 Cloverfield Lane. Where to begin with this movie? Jerry, why don't you take the lead? Oh man, uh, well I mean this this movie takes place I guess after the events of Cloverfield? It, it must, or, or kind of simultaneously, but uh, you know, I, I don't know, what did you, hold on, let me think. Way to take the lead by asking me to go ahead. I'm bad at this. Alright, what did you think? Because I'm so used to not having to do it. This movie was really cool to me, because uh, you know, they, they brought back the whole mystery element with the trailer and everything, so we were all wondering like what kind of movie is this going to be, and I... I was really surprised. I was like, it's a, it's kind of a slow burn, sort of paranoid tension movie for the first two mm -hmm. thirds, you know? And I thought that was a really cool, different direction to take this, because the first one is so manic. And this one is still intense, but because you're trapped in this really tiny space. I mean, it all takes place in a, in a doomsday bunker for, for most of it, you know? Uh, as I looking at the camera <clears throat> thing go? Not very well. Not very well at all. Looking back and forth at you, you know, I'm trying to think. You only get one. You, you either get a lead or looking at the camera right now. To get the Cloverfield comparisons out of the way, this is, it's just not, they're, they're two, when I, this isn't one of those situations where you're like, they're like two totally different films. These are two totally different movies, yeah, you know? Yeah. They are not the same in genre or style whatsoever. This is like a domestic thriller. I really enjoy it a lot. I think yeah. it's a fantastic film. And John Goodman though, man, holy shit. John Goodman's fucking great He's in this incredible movie. in this movie. Fucking terrifying too. Yeah, well and he plays a guy who, like, who almost seems like he's borderline autistic or something like that. He's got this very strange personality and John Goodman brings so many little ticks and nuances to that. At first I was like, what is John Goodman doing? And then after a couple minutes I caught on and I was like, this is a great character performance. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great character because, you know, you can't tell for a long time whether he's evil or not. I'm not going to tell you if in the end you find out if he is evil or not. It's you interesting because he's unnerved by it. Yeah, because <laughs> there are times where you're like, this is a scary motherfucker and you guys should bail. And then there are other times where the characters are starting to like him and you're like, that makes sense why they'd start to like him at this particular moment based off what we're seeing. The psychology of what they do with John Goodman's character is one of the best parts of this movie. I think the psychology with all the characters yeah. is, is, a, is a definite strength and it's cool because there are things I can point to in the acting and the writing that make these work so well. Yeah. You know, because it's the scenes they choose to give you because this isn't like a frantic, it's almost kind of not like a big Hollywood movie. Yeah, it's not even like crazily stylistic shot in this one location, you know? Yeah. There's some stylistic shots, but for the most part, it's, it's captured like a rather normal film, you know? Well, yeah, and it's almost captured sort of in, in a more indie way because it's, like exactly. you know, they start with this with this whole thing about like uh, something is wrong with her relationship with her boyfriend. She's you know cutting and running and stuff like that. And that you know is a place we often start for these movies. And they found a way it's to like make psycho esque. That, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, kind of. And then. And, you know, just, like, we love domestic hardship as the stock, like, character development mm -hmm. tool. But this felt actually natural and actually, like, it was a real situation yeah. that she was going through. Even though, like, the trailers don't tell you much, I still thought, like, well, the, I've seen the trailer multiple times and I have a feeling I know how this will play out. Yeah, yeah It yeah. doesn't play out the way you, <laughs> the yeah. trailer make might allude you to believe it will play out this way. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't quite sure what to expect going on. Yeah, there, there's, like, things, there's a lot of time where I'm like... What direction is this going to go now? Yeah. Like, well, with that new plot turn, how's this going to unfold? Well, that's <laughs> you know? the thing, too, is is th I think they really got smart about writing this movie because they give you a whole other creepy subplot to, to focus on. Yeah. So partway through, you're like, this is fucked up, and I'm not even, we haven't even seen a creature yet. So they took the time to really pack their characters with stuff going yeah. on just in this tiny world, so that the tiny world is just as scary as the big world for completely different reasons. I think it's like more engaging than the first Cloverfield. Well, totally, because yeah. we just re we just rewatched Cloverfield on, on Mega Movie Get Together. The movie doesn't have a lot in terms of characters. That movie is all about the immediacy and the thrill and this sort of creature, yeah. you know, putting you right in a city being destroyed. And this takes the complete opposite. This is almost like Alien and Aliens, but in reverse. Yeah. Because it's like this one takes this sort of, we're going to 
really confine this and we're gonna really take our time and tightly unweave a mystery. I you wouldn't know? say it's slow burn thriller though. It's It, it I, takes its time. It like, takes its time, but I wouldn't call it slow. Slow burn it doesn't mean slow though. Slow burn means that. I know, but you know what, I, what I'm trying to say is like sometimes- okay, it's not you, House of the Devil. Yeah, like, sometimes you watch a slow burn thriller and you're like, yeah. this is a slow movie, yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, it moves, because this movie's only like an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. Yeah, it moves along, but it's not, you know, particularly fast. And it's never boring, because it's tense and uncomfortable, and then you kind of start to like people, and yeah. then other things come into play, and so, like, there's a whole lot going on. Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Ramona, Whoa, Ramona dude. Flowers. She, yeah. <laughs> dude, she is so fucking good in this movie. Yeah, she is, she's incredibly natural, and, and again, like, you know, you could say, like, oh, this is a you know, silly alien movie and stuff like that. She is us. You know, like, she's this our This is her cipher. story. We're, yeah. we're along the ride with her specifically, and, you know, we know her sympathetically. Yeah. The other two guys we don't know. And she does a really good job of playing those moments naturally. And rarely in a film like this do you get a good character arc. When this movie was over, I was like, I didn't expect a character arc. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. damn, does it work well here, yeah. you know? <laughs> Everybody brought their A-game to this movie. Like, all the actors, and I think in the writing too, and, and I noticed one of the writers was the guy who wrote Whiplash. Yeah, yeah. Like, so they doubled down on their, on their script. The movie's unpredictable, and it keeps you on your toes, and it keeps you engaged, because the interaction with the characters is fantastic. And John Gallagher Jr. as Emmett. When I saw the trailer, I was, I had an idea of what the character might be like. Yeah. I wasn't expecting him to be so likable and in a non-cliche way. He seemed like a real dude, like a genuine real dude. This, it felt like, this seems like this could be a real guy, you know? Well, they took that approach to the to the character development of like, what would these people talk about if they were in a room together? Yeah. You know, it's not like two hours, we have to get out of here. Yeah. Like, how? You know, they're fucking bored in a bunker. Like they Sometimes start... it's just the lifestyle of living in that bunker. Yeah, and, and it becomes so engrossing, partly because, you know, they bothered to write these characters and partly because each of them, the three of them, are really good and, and yeah. are really nuanced. And every character of the main three I was like, these are characters that are easy to do fine. Like, after a couple minutes of watching everyone, I was like, man, that, like, Mary Elizabeth Winstead's doing a great job. Then John Goodman comes on screen. And then he started, like, really impressing me. And then John Gallagher Jr., I was yeah. like, oh, this guy could be the weak link. But no, even he brought the A-game. A lot of critics have already revealed that, yes, there is some creature stuff in here. I what I think there wasn't going to be. Yeah, you don't no. know. I, I mean, okay, saying. first off, it would suck if there wasn't. Yeah, I was like, like they despite have to how good something. this movie is, I'm like, if there's not a single creature. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, be yeah. upset, you know. No, that would totally yeah. be kind of a bummer. I'm not saying anything, but they don't forget about you. <laughs> yeah, and what it's what's cool is it's rather brief in a sense. However, it gets you thinking about how the Cloverfield world has expanded. Yeah, you I know, mean, like it it's, makes it's you weird. It, <laughs> yeah, it makes you think of it as a world. It's, yeah, because yeah. Because the, the, I think the greatest improvement this movie makes over the first one is that this one feels like a real world and a real story. Whereas, like, if you rewatch Cloverfield, it's fun and there's some things they do really well, but you're still like, oh, these are actors. It's like, a fun, entertaining monster flick. But you can kind of see the funhouse walls. Yeah, exactly. This is this is not that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, this is like. Wow, this is a whole situation I would love to explore and see more of, you know. Like. And it's weird, it's like it's a psychological drama for the most part, but we saw this on IMAX and I think it was totally worth it yeah. to watch it on IMAX. I thought it was like totally worth it. Well, this is kind of, not that they're similar, but this is kind of like Ex Machina. It's like, it's yeah. so tense, even though it's just people talking in, in a small space. And like, they did that same thing. They really built the dread up yeah. and used how small everything is to really never let you be yeah. entirely comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And it's a disorienting location, too, because it's like, it's not familiar. Most people haven't seen the inside of a doomsday bunker, you know, to yeah. know how kind of strange that must be. Because part of it almost looks like a living room, and then part of it just like an awful storage shed. Dude, like, that's a movie that fucking sticks with you, man. Like, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, that was an intense fucking thriller. I was impressed by this, and that was the last thing I was expecting. Not that I wasn't expecting to be impressed, but like, impressed for different reasons. I was like, man, you really made a, a good film, I think, with yeah. this. Not just a fun monster flick. This you know? is one of those films that were, it's like, it got released early in the year yeah. because of the genre from the marketing. It's probably not going to get the recognition it deserves yeah, come yeah. award season. When the script in here is fucking amazing. Yeah. Solid fucking screenplay. John Goodman deserves yeah. a nomination. He does. <laughs> he's really 
really good. That's the thing is like we have all these young adult stories that are like about alien invasions yeah. and things like that. And this felt like even though there's no book to go with it, I was like, this seems like like the literature version of that. Yeah. Where I was like, it appeals to the popcorn crowd, but this is a really interesting little sci-fi story. And know? this must be the first time where it's been successfully done where they continued a world that started off from found footage and then just put it in film format. I think this is the first time the first that time it's worked. Really yeah. Well. Like, <laughs> it's like this other their last exorcism, yeah. you know, like beyond that. Like I know I like Wreck almost Wreck, got Wreck it. Almost got it. it. There is it's split this one, people are pretty unanimous and this is a very good movie. Well, and I think they, they took the right approach, and I've noticed this across a lot of different artistic platforms, is like, if you just take your time before coming back, and especially with Cloverfield, because the whole element of surprise was such a big thing, they took their time and found a way to recreate that. Yeah. Like, and that makes it all the more special when they get it right. I really hope they don't just start dishing out Cloverfield movies. That's my hope, too. And I hope the next yeah. one, it's like, I would like, if they do another one, change the type of movie a little bit again, and, and let's have some new characters. Just keep that going. Yeah, I mean, it's really well shot. Uh, it's well edited for the most part. I mean, there are maybe a couple of scenes where, like, you know, the action's a little garbled. I guess... If uh, you need a nitpick. I guess the one thing is, because Cloverfield exists the movie, in some ways... Because you really don't need to see the first Cloverfield at all. Like, there's not a no. single reason you need to watch it to get this movie. It'll affect your experience. But exactly. You don't need to, yeah. Because of the fact that when you're watching this film, if you've seen Cloverfield, you want to see a creature at least at one point. But yeah. if you haven't seen Cloverfield and this is your first time watching it, you won't care for that. If a creature does appear, it'll be more of a surprise. Yeah. You know, yeah unfortunately, yeah. most people have seen Cloverfield, and this the people who are interested have seen Cloverfield already. Yeah, knowing Cloverfield, it does at least come into your mind sometimes where you're like, oh, they got those little spider alien things. Like, what if one of those, like, breaks in or something? Yeah. You know, you have an idea of other creatures we haven't seen. You start seen. to forget about it. You do, you do. And yeah. that's the thing, is like, you may be sitting there for the first half hour, not, like, obsessing over it, but it may cross your mind, and then at a certain point, you realize, oh, shit, I'm just, I'm just locked in this. Yeah, yeah. This little tiny space is just as compelling as anything else outside. And that's what's cool, is, like, the mystery of what's going on outside. Because it's not... Cloverfield and that's it. You know, it's not the first movie is going on outside. You're like you're hearing like stuff uh, that's I don't want to give anything away, but you're like that wasn't in the first movie. Well, yeah. you know? It makes you go, what is this going on outside? It <laughs> expands know? it in a really subtle way. I just think for different. the third Cloverfield, they should bring back T.J. Miller. <laughs> we found him. <laughs> yeah. Except they like he's a he's like a half robot now. He's like RoboCop but with a camera. <laughs> yeah. RoboCam. Oh, Bear McCreary from The Walking Dead did the music, too. The music's pretty cool. Music is pretty damn good. Well, guys, um, my rating would have to be... I oh. give it 100 Gregs. What's a Greg? I mean, after a guy, Greg Alba. Like, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Oh, yeah. I've heard about that guy. He's a good guy. He's an alright guy. Much more sincere. Much kinder than myself. Yeah. Same size penis. We really? actually look the same. Oh, okay. But we're not the same. God, if he commits a crime, like, you know, how are they going to tell you apart on the the sketch? What if they come for you? They'll send Greg. And then, okay. They'll get Greg. Okay. Yeah. Ryan ain't going anywhere. <laughs> oh, and I give it, like, 2,700 Jerry's. Good. Good. Anyway, dudettes and dudes and uh, hermaphrodites, if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe today to The Real Rejects. Don't worry, we got transgender people on here. We got some people who are born she -male. I just didn't know if that was the term. So. Reasons to see... Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> Reasons to Jerry, his playlist on The Real Rejects and Dank Ass Stubs. It's like Jerry's miniature shows inside of The Real Rejects. And also follow us on our social networks like the Facebooks, the Instagram, the Twitters. If anything happens to John Goodman in a, uh, like, if he gets, like, molested or something. Oh. We're gonna find that guy, kill him, and serve him to John Goodman. John Goodman will eat the pedophile that touched him. The How did you get to here?